Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Wise Guys by Gale Force 9. The game plays three to four players, takes roughly about an hour to play, and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game Wise Guys, you are playing as a mob boss or mob association in the Roaring Twenties during Prohibition Era in America. Basically, the liquor has now been banned and you as a mob boss need to gather that liquor and make it out to your reliable customers. In order to do so, you'll have to traverse different locations and avoid other other mob bosses who intend to take the money, liquor, and uh, guns away from you and place all of your characters into the emergency room. Uh, you're going to go through a certain number of rounds based on these cards here, and your objective is to have the most cash by the end of the game. Will you succeed in this game? Let's find out in my review, along with how to play and of course how to set the game up. To begin a game of wise guys, go ahead and simply start by taking the five starting location tiles and place them face up around the wise guys main board, which is going to have the areas where you can place your Roaring Twenties cards. Then take six random tiles that are not the starting tiles and place them down below those tiles. Additionally, you'll take all of the money, all of the booze, and all of the guns and place them into a pool where all players can reach. Take the Roaring Twenties cards, uh, shuffle them up, and then deal out 15 of them and place them on the Wise Guys board. Set aside any additional tiles you won't be needing, like locations, and then go ahead and take the black market and place it on either the three or four player side, depending on the number of players in the game. After that, go ahead and give each player a random uh, association, so to speak, basically a gang um, leader, as well as their specific but, uh, tile boards. Each player is going to get a specific color, whether it be blue, uh, whether it be yellow or green, and they're going to get the associated characters along with them. The uh, first thing they're going to get is their made men, associates, and then of course a certain number of money, of booze, and of guns. And they'll place it behind a starting screen, all of their secret items. Uh, all the rest of the items, uh, whether it be other tokens or characters, can be placed aside away from your game board and, behind, and not behind your starting screen, along with of course the color die of that character's color. Uh, after you've done that, you've given every single player a character, as well as their board and all of their tokens. You're then going to take the clout marker of that specific uh, mob boss association and place it on the starting space dictated on the board. It could be one, two, three, or four. That will basically be their uh, reputation that they'll be utilizing throughout the game to gain more money during certain phases of the game and, of course, during combat. Once that has been done, you're going to take the starting player, the boss of bosses tile, and place it in front of one of the players, presumably the person who last chose a character organization. And then you'll begin the game. The game starts off very simply, and how that works is you're going to start off by flipping over over two location tiles. Of the six, flip over two of them. And now these are going to be usable for the rest of the game. I went ahead and flipped over George Hoffman Brewery and the Bella Napoli Cafe. After you've flipped over two locations, you're going to then take a Roaring Twenties card and place it out onto the field face up. These can be locations or things that happen at the end of a round or things that happen passively throughout the round. And for the first round, it's one, the second round, it's two, and then the third round, it's three cards. And after that, every single round additionally is going to be three cards until this deck runs out, which is also going to signify the end of the game. After you've placed out one of these cards here, you're then going to go on and move to the orders phase of the game. And orders is uh, basically you're going to be utilizing your orders tokens based on how many you start with plus the number of made men you have. And you'll spend one on your turn, starting with the boss of bosses. On the back of your player sheet or your hidden little reference tool here, it'll tell you the different actions you can take. One is you could spend an order uh, and you can place it on a location to take any of your guys from your club house, which is where all of your guys who you uh, originally gained at the beginning of the game start, and then move those characters there. So if I wanted to bring um, a bunch of my made men to the city hospital, I'd spend an order on the city hospital and place my three guys there. And you can place your guys from any one location to any other location, uh, but there are certain rules as far as how the emergency room works. If your characters are in the emergency room for one reason or another, the only way to get out of them is to roll out. But otherwise, every location functions like that, and that includes going back to your clubhouse. Another option is you can exploit a location. If you control a location, meaning you're the only person there, no other characters are there but your own, you can do whatever that location says. You can spin an order and perform that specific location's uh, ability. And so, for instance, if I had people on George Hoffman Brewery and I wanted to spend an order, I could do so, and then I could trade money 
for booze. And I can do that a maximum of two times. And then as a boost, meaning I could spend an additional order, I can gain an additional booze each time I perform an order in that location. Boosts are often bonus orders that you can give out, provided you have done the location's action once. Uh, as, as opposed to exploiting a location, you might have to fight because if you are in a location and another place the player is as well and you want to perform that location's action, you can't do it unless you remove that character from the location. And in order to fight, you're going to have to check and see what that location is. Is it a slugging location or a talking location? If it is a slugging location, you're going to perform the order of combat, meaning you're basically going to calculate your total amount of combat for slugging, which is on the left hand side of each of your different maid men and or associates. You're going to then add any guns you would like secretly face down and then reveal them and uh, those will count as a plus three and also end up putting other characters into the hospital. And uh, you're also, I got this little cheat sheet here, going to be able to roll a die, uh, which is your main die here, along with the other player as well. And the final thing is also you can call for backup, meaning if you have other characters in other locations, you can take them and place them in that location. And your cumulative score versus your opponent's cumulative score will determine who wins. And then after that, you'll assess how many guns were played. And for each gun that was played, maximum number of the number of characters in the game so if i have three characters and you have one you can play one gun and i can play three we will assign those guns out to those players and then those players will take their characters and place them in the emergency room for each gun that was used so if blue and green both used a gun blue and green would both take one of their guys in the combat and place it in the emergency room and then of course any other characters would go back to the clubhouse of the player that lost the player that won however is going to have the opportunity to then instantly take the action of the place that they had just simply defeated once they have done that then their turn will be over for that specific action Let's take a look at another one here. Uh, recruiting associates. That's really simple. You spend an order, you'll take an associate you don't have on your clubhouse, and you'll put it into your clubhouse for that order. Uh, to initiate a made man. Well, if you have an associate and you want to make it stronger, you can turn him into a made man, basically a boss. How you do that is you'll have to spend, uh, I believe it's a gun and a money. Let me see if I'm right. Cash and a gun. And you'll promote that associate to a made man. And you can select any made man you have in your pool that you don't have currently available on your clubhouse and put him there or on the board somewhere. Two, also, uh, you can sit tight. <laughs> sit tight basically is you do nothing, but still costs you an order to do so. So you're still spending orders as you move around the board. And the final thing is you have a gang order. Uh, gang orders are associated with your character board. Like, for instance, the north side gang is going to be able to spend one uh, order in order to gain one money. They get one money one time from that order. Each of the characters, or I should say organizations, all have their own unique gang order. And the orders phase will continue up until the point where nobody has any orders left. And if you don't have any orders left, everybody else will continue until they have utilized all of their orders. Then you will move on to the black market phase. The black market phase is symbolized on this tile here. And this tile here represents how many boos need to be in the black market in the phase in order to gain that much money for each of the boozes. So everybody will take a certain hidden amount of boos into their hand based on their clout, and there's a certain little clout tracker here that you can take a look at, and you'll put them out like this, and then you will reveal. And uh, you're gonna add up the total of all players' boos. You'll calculate that onto the board here, so if there was a total of two, two, and two, that's six. You would check the four to six, each of the booze that you're trading in is worth two dollars, and you would get two dollars for each booze. If it was more than seven, they'd only be worth one. If it was three or less, it would be worth um, one. Um, uh, it would be worth three apiece, which is actually very, very good. And then the black market phase is going to be over. Um, there's also rules about how clout works as well. You can gain, gain clout from the board here. Whenever you participate in the fight utilizing guns, you're going to lose clout. And oh, we've got this fancy little thing here. And the last thing you'll be doing is you'll be resolving any cards here. So these Roaring Twenties cards are not only potentially locations, um, like this, for instance, is an opportunity card. It's a location where you can actually put a guy there just for that specific round. But some of them are going to involve last calls. Like, for instance, Police Crackdown. You can discard all guns and lose one clout for each discarded gun at the end of the round. So you might want to run your guns out of town before the end of the round happens. Otherwise, you're going to suffer some penalties because with your clout track, also comes uh, penalties at the uh, you can only sell a certain number of liquor 
in the black market phase based on your clout. And if you have zero clout and you lose clout, you'll lose a made man. Basically, he will be removed from the game in one way or another. And then finally, you'll clean up all of the all these little order tokens and you'll put them back into your storage. And once again, rinse and repeat. They're selecting the amount of your um, order tokens you'll be getting based on your number plus the number of made men and going around and spending your orders, uh, placing out the cards, etc., etc., up until all these cards have been played out. Once all these cards have been played out, the lat's going to trigger the end of the game, the last round, and you're going to then calculate the amount of money in your pool here, and whoever has the most money is the winner. Now, all of these different locations will provide you some type of benefit or bonus. Sometimes they'll just give you straight up money, allowing you to trade one for one with certain items. Uh, other times there's going to be boosts that will allow you to increase your uh, ability to make made men quicker. Um, sometimes here, what's this one here? Gain a money for each made men uh, that, is, uh, that is here. Oh, that's really nice. And a boost, which allows you to move all members here to a different location. And then over here you have a basement still, which is gain a, gain a booze. And as a boost, you can trade in a weapon for two booze, but it's a maximum of once. And they all specify exactly what they do. And there is a large amount of different locations that you're not using every single game that will kind of change the game up each and every time you choose to do so. Booze is made to get money. Money is used for pretty much everything and to win the game. And then your guns is going to give you that ability in combat to uh, gain control of certain areas and control the game and thusly, hopefully, win the game. And that's basically the idea of Wise Guys. Let's go ahead and give it my review. Wise Guys is a gangster game based on prohibition in which you're trying to gather as much money as possible. These are um, some famous entrepreneurs of the um, American, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, the American economy during the time. Basically, whenever liquor was not allowed, there was uh, certain ways to gather liquor, and most people who were the ones to gather the liquor were going to be involved with the mob. And there's a bunch of different mob organizations, and each of these different organizations functions differently. Some of them have less orders, but give you a very nice bonus to your gang rule. Um, some of them are going to give you a starting clout that's higher than others, or maybe even starting assets that are higher than others and you have to utilize those to the best of your, of your ability and each of them functions differently one's kind of like a fighter and one's more about uh, controlling clout like for instance which one is it is the north side so one of these guys i think it's the red one is actually the one that's got al capone in it and that's all about liquor it's all about gathering as much liquor as you can and spending that liquor at the black market or turning it in for money uh, some of these other ones that have less orders like the north side gang can fight for free uh, and uh, as long as it's a, a slugging, and thusly using abilities, it hurts your opponents. You can actually remove characters from a game. Oh, and at the end of a round, I forgot to mention too, uh, you're also going to roll to check injured characters. And if you roll a one to three, you put it back into your pool, uh, which you can then use to uh, gain once again. Or if you roll a four to six, that character um, is returned to the clubhouse. Uh, there's also ways to remove characters from the game as well. If you go to the uh, hospital, you can actually remove a player's character from the game, and you want to keep all your made men, because that's going to not only assist you in winning combat, but also in controlling specific locations that will give you a benefit. This is more so about r location control and resource management, controlling and gathering resources and controlling locations, more than it is about combat. But combat is a very important aspect of the game as far as controlling those locations and keeping control with them. Utilizing the different combat strategies, whether it be talking or slugging, is going to be important and certain gangs are better at it than others. Some characters have higher stats, like for instance you have Ralph Sheldon here, which is a 4-2 for combat 2 talking, whereas somebody uh, like maybe in the green gang here has got a 3-1, this guy George Bugs Moran. And uh, that's also based on the different types of gangs, like mm, Al Capone's gang is not very, very strong when it comes to fighting or when it comes to talking, but what they are good at is gathering lots of valuable resources to win the game and uh, this character this one over here doesn't have a lot of orders but they have a lot of ability to talk and or fight mainly fight and so they have their own unique interests and twists to them which I really really enjoyed about this game uh, the artwork for this game is phenomenal excellent spectacular. Uh, I, I really, really digged it. This game brought to life the theme very easily. I understood where to go, what to do, when to do it, and uh, what each of the locations did based on what they were named, how the art was done, and of course the text on the bottom didn't help, uh, did, didn't hurt as well. But I knew if I was going to head over to the basement stills, I was going to get some liquor, and I could also trade my guns for additional booze, because there's probably somebody down there that was willing to uh, trade what they had, what they you know, made, the liquor, for 
your weaponry. And it's probably other gangs that you're having to deal with. Uh, what I also dug about this game too is there was a ton of extra locations. So they didn't need to add as many as they did and they have quite a bit. All of them are high quality and all of the artwork is excellent as well. The different, different gangs function very differently as well. And honestly, I think Al Capone is probably the easiest one to play, whereas the other three are a little more challenging and require a different type of strategy than most people would be used to in a game like this. But it pre pre uh, presides a nice twist. What I would actually have liked is if on the back of these, there was a unique, uh, like everybody played exactly the same way, and then when you flipped it over, you have a unique way of playing the game, which would change it up. I don't know how they would do that necessarily. I guess they could flip these tokens over um, instead of having just the Sheldon gang. Instead, it would just be like they all have the same exact uh, sides for all of their characters, and then when you flip them over as well, basically making the game balanced out, and then once you want to push it a little bit more in depth, a little bit more complex, you can then add the different types of gangs in and the different types of characters in, which I think would have been nice. But uh, either way, personally, I would always prefer to play the unique aspect of the game. So I'd rather have this than it be a little more bland, but I can see for newer players it being better the other way around. Overall, high quality, high artwork, and the game is a lot of fun. Um, now, this game is a bit of an aggressive game and you are going to be hurting players. You're going to be pushing players away. You might not like the specific gang you're playing as, so make sure that you choose one that formulates based on your play style. And you have to also acknowledge that while you're messing with somebody else, the third player or the fourth player who are not being attacked are gathering resources. So it's a constant tug of war, a push and pull of sorts in which you have to go back and forth dealing with other players as they're starting to get ahead while still keeping yourself ahead at the same time using your gang's unique specific abilities. Uh, that being said, if you like a game like this, an aggressive combat style game that involves area control and resource management, as well as a little bit of blind bidding, then I would suggest taking a look at the game Wise Guys by Gale Force 9. They've made a lot of really cool games lately that I've been seeing and this one is no different high quality overall which is my my biggest excitement about this is just I really loved the thickness and it reminded me of actually our game just because of how much effort they put into making everything so thick nice high quality anyway if you're interested there's a link down below in the description for you to pick up the game a game of money guns and booze set in prohibition era Chicago Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the Game Wise Guys. If you like this game, like I said before, there's a link down below in the description. You can also check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. If you would like, you can also do some giveaways on the site. We'll have a new one up tomorrow, and there's a winner from the previous one up today. Every week on Sunday at 6.30 p.m., we do a live stream where we play games just like this one. And if you're interested, you can go ahead and check out not only every Monday it's uploaded on YouTube, but also every Sunday it's on Facebook and Twitch. Uh, you can also check out uh, moonshellgame.com. It's my wife's game. It's a puzzle game and we just finished releasing it and we have some copies left over. If you're interested in picking one up, that's on the website where you can do so. That being said, thank you guys so much for watching and as always, I look forward to meeting all of you wise guys next time.